Welcome to Wagons of Steel. It's a party and everyone's invited. Um, this weekend, I was hoping I would be at the Seattle Divisional Race, which this year, because of all the pandemic stuff, is actually the season opener. Usually the season opener is at Boise, Idaho. I don't usually make that race anyways. And then there's some other races that aren't happening. Mission is supposed to be coming up. Anyways, I won't be at Seattle because my car is not ready. I have my slicks. Look at that. Whoa. Brand new slicks. Is there anything cooler than slicks with the, the stickers on them? Anyways, I won't be there because my car's not ready. It's close. The Pistons have arrived at Terry's. He's working on that. Um, it, we've ordered the rings and the bearings and uh, next week I'll bring all my other uh, all the other stuff because he's going to actually assemble the engine for us. He's a, my crew chief is a badass at assembling engines and I trust him to do the job but Terry really lives for it and he wants to do it and uh, we're going to let him. So that's where my racing program is but uh, today I'm not going to talk about the race car. That's that's the whole reason I'm not even going to the divisional event is because I hate talking about my car when it's not ready. Oh, my car isn't ready because... Uh, excuses, excuses. I hate excuses. So today, we're going to talk about my bicycles. I have been a, a bicycle freak since I can remember. Um, as long as I've been a car freak. I At least, I um, I think it started when my... My, my dad was a reporter in Paris, and so we all lived in Paris when I was five. And we lived across the street or down the street from the Peugeot professional bicycle racing team. And they would load their cars up with all their bicycles and go off. And, I, you know, way too long ago. I don't know if they were like the, the top of the line Tour de France pros or just, I, I don't know what their deal was. But it made an impression on me. And... Uh, I always wanted to be a bike racer and starting when I was around I guess 13 when I was living in Florida I actually started racing bicycles and um, it uh, it was good for me because you know see, I'm wearing my glasses now um, I needed glasses my whole life I never really realized that and so I had no depth perception so even though I'm you know relatively athletic kind of guy I um, unless I'm wearing my glasses there's no hope of me hitting a ball because I don't have depth perception. And so I was always kind of lousy at ball sports. And so bicycle racing was good for me. Um, I started racing, you know, I, I, I was a mechanic at a bike shop and I worked on a lot of BMX bikes, but I was into road bikes. And uh, so I've always had a bunch of road bikes and always really grooved on them. Um, I was 13 and 78. And I raced until I was 17. And um, so that, like the late 70s and early 80s is uh, road racing bikes. Those are what I'm really into. And uh, so I have, I have an interesting collection of them. And I'll show you that stuff today. Before I get to showing bicycles off, I'll, I'll just have to say, you know, the bicycle racing experience that I had, especially when I was old enough to drive and organize teams and stuff, um, really laid the the f foundation for my my current uh, wagons of steel drag racing stuff. You know, like bringing teams around the the state of Florida and uh, organizing uniforms and sponsors and buying expensive equipment and all of that really tied into what I what I do today. It's, it, I never would have expected that, but there you go. Well, here are a couple interesting bikes. They're not built up right now. This one is my last race bicycle. I got this one when I was 16. It's a 1974 Raleigh team. Uh, they came with a very iconic red, black, and yellow paint job. This one I... Uh, 
I painted uh, shortly after I got it. A friend of mine got it from a lawnmower repair shop. You know, back in the day in the late 70s, Raleigh, they're a weird company. They, they, um, they had this team, the Raleigh team, which was like the New England Patriots of their day. They, uh, for bike racing, they, they just dominated everything for several years. And so they had this iconic bicycle and this is like for the day, this is, this is as good as it got. I mean, it's a steel bike. You can see it's got this beautiful lug work and it's a, it's a dinosaur compared to modern bikes. But anyways, they made beautiful machines back then and, um, they, uh, they also made these pieces of crap out of like lawn sprinkler pipe that looked just like it. They painted them exactly the same. It's just crazy. I mean, I, um, it, anybody, even people who know nothing about bikes, you could look at one and say, this is a good bike and this one is a shitty bike. But I guess they didn't know at the lawnmower repair store. And, um, my friend was in there with his mom picking up a lawnmower that had been fixed and he looked down and he said, yikes, that's a real Raleigh team machine. And, uh, so he, uh, he bought it and then the guy had been stolen from a couple of years earlier, found, uh, saw him riding this bike at a bike race and said, Hey, that's my bike. And my friend's father who was there was kind of a dick and he, uh, he, uh, told the guy, well, you know, I'll see you in court, buddy. And the guy backed off. I guess he'd already gotten insurance on him and stuff and everybody walked away feeling kind of shitty about the situation and so my friend couldn't wait to get rid of this bike and uh, I got in an accident on mine bent it up and so I, I bought this off of him for I think fifty dollars crazy and uh, it had a really horrible paint job on it by then and so I uh, I had it professionally repainted in this green color it's the same color I had my, my first race car painted. It's a terrible color. I don't recommend it for anything. I, I really wouldn't paint anything this color anymore. I just, I can't, you know. The reason it's got all these stickers all over it is because I rode this thing for years as my primary source of transportation. And uh, when I was living in Oakland, I, I um, it was not my best interest to have it look really, really fancy. So I painted it up like this and it looked, it's kind of like a camouflage art student paint job that kept me out of trouble. Here's another bike that's very similar. I think it's an even earlier one that I got off of, uh, uh, yeah, Craigslist. I'm always on the lookout for Craigslist bikes. This has got a, what's known as a fastback, uh, seat stay arrangement, which is really, really elegant. I mean, Raleigh, I mean, they made some really crappy bikes, but they made some beautiful bikes, too. This uh, little sticker here, Reynolds 531, that used to be the hot tubes for a bike back in the day. Reynolds 531 or Columbus? I'll show you a Columbus bike soon. And then they've got their serial numbers on the bottom. I'm not really sure what that one means. The, um, so we painted this on there. M. Bodenox on this bike at one point. Yeah, this is the Raleigh Professional. I think it's from, the other one's from 74. I think it's even earlier. There's a Facebook page. Maybe some of you guys are here from that page of all kinds of people who have all kinds of knowledge of old Raleigh's. You can see this one's got the a different kind of seat stay, seat post arrangement. What other highlights are there of these? Oh yeah, I'll show you the, the forks. Uh, 
This is an iconic fork from back in the day. It's made by a company called Cinelli, famous Italian company, made the the top called the crown. And this is what's known as our Cinelli full sloping crown. And they used to come on all the top end bikes. The knock on them is they're a little heavy, but everything on an old bike is a little heavy compared to modern bikes. Carbon fiber bikes are just amazingly light. But anyways, the other knock on these is they're so strong that if you run into something, you know, with a different type of fork crown, maybe you'll just take out the fork and you can just replace the fork. But with one of these, if you run into something, this stays rock solid and everything else around it bends. Kind of like the steel dashboard of bicycles. Here's the one off the Pro. Because it's chrome. They used to chrome all kinds of stuff on old bikes. Here's another Raleigh that I got for $35 pretty recently from a swap meet in town. Actually, it was from a, a, a store a, a, called Granny's Attic, which is a, it's kind of like a swap meet. It's just a funky store. It sells all kinds of weird old things. It's, a, it's really a time capsule. It's got the seat. Super collectible. It's a Brooks Professional. And, it, you know, it's way more comfortable than you would think. Um, it's got all the original... I don't know if you read. That's Campagnolo. That logo there. And this is the Grand Sport Group. See the trailer says Grand Sport on it. It's a... Uh, Campagnolo is an old school Italian parts maker. They still outfit fancy bikes. They used to be the best there was. Um, this has got the Weinman brakes. It's really light. It's the Grand Sport Competition GS. Um, it's from the late 70s. It's got Campagnolo pedals on it. Campanello seat post, Campanello shifters, and down here, this thing is a bolt-on piece that guides the cables to the derailleurs, and uh, it's worth a lot of money. It's another one of those little parts. Um, also, you can see it's made out of the Reynolds 531 tubing. It's a really light bike. It's another one that was built, you know, one of the good ones from Raleigh. You can see it's got beautiful lug work on it. You know, all built by drunk English guys back in the 70s. You like that pink tape? And then this one's got the original wheels, which are actually in pretty good shape. Can't say the same about the tires. That's unrideable at the moment. With that. These are called the Weinman Concave. And uh, they were really, really strong and light. And these are little guards to scrape the thorns and glass off your tires as you ride. Those were pretty popular back in back in the 80s. This must have just sat outside somebody's carport or something. It's got some surface rust, but it seems like it's in pretty good shape. 35 bucks. Can't go wrong on that. This bike is a 1980 Colnago Super. And there's the Colnago logo. You know, Colnago won the Tour de France last year. Ernesto Colnago, he's still around. Well, the company is. I think he's probably dead. He's been building bikes for the greats forever. There's the logo, Colnago Super. This has got Campagnolo Nouveau record. You can see it's got the the five-armed spider instead of the three-armed spider. 
this is much higher up on the line, but that three-armed spider, the Grand Sport on this other bike is super rare. Um, I bought this one for 800 bucks several years ago, which that's a lot of money, but it's brought me a lot of joy. I've really enjoyed this bike. It was it was the bike I really dreamed of when I was 15 years old in 1980, and thanks to the magic of Craigslist, I now have one. I love that red. And then you can see the remnants of the sticker there. This is made out of Columbus tubing, which is the Italian super high-end tubing. A little rush coming through here. You can see beautiful lug work. This one has early Shimano Dura Ace derailers on it. I'm sure it originally came with Campagnolo. Um, a lot of times people would replace the the campy stuff. Shimano worked a little better. Nowadays everything's shifted from the from here. This stuff is obsolete. Every modern bike has way better shifting than the older bikes. These ones you really had to know what you were doing. You can see the seat's pretty low in this one. My son rides this bike sometimes. This is my latest acquisition. Another Craigslist score. I got this one for 450 bucks. This is a 1983 Gazelle Campion Mondial World Champion. This one's also made out of the Reynolds 531 like the Raleigh. And look at this beautiful work here. I love this like wrap around work. And this one's got little cutouts in the lugs. This really pretty pearl white. This bike's in really nice shape, actually. See, this one's got these are the Campagnolo Super Record cranks. You can tell because it's got like the like it's cut out there, it doesn't have that bar across there, and it's cut out in here. Um, that's a Super Record front derailleur. You can tell because it's got the cutouts there. This is the Nouveau Record rear derailleur. I have a Super Record that I'm I might put on there. I don't really care that much. The difference in the Super Record is it's got titanium bolts in it. I had to replace the tires on this. I actually ride this bike sometimes. It's really fast. Compared to modern bikes, it's kind of heavy. I guess it weighs 20 pounds. Here's the logo. Gazelle's a very old Dutch bicycle company. They've been around since 1900 something. They've built a lot of race bikes, but their specialty really is like heavy town bikes. They sold a lot of bikes in, in uh, Asia and Australia. They make a lot of electric bikes now, they're still around. So it's got, you can see here, this is called Pantograph. It's got, you know, it's originally it just got like the Campagnolo levers, like on the Colnago, but they painted them black. And then they, they pantographed their little logo in there. It's pretty trick. You got the little leaping gazelle there. This one is called a semi-sloping fork crown, as opposed to the full sloping fork, uh, fork crown I was showing you on the other old Raleigh's. And then, this one, you can tell these guys, this one is a flat fork crown. It's another flat one. 
Speaking of beautiful log work, look at this little Colnago clover cut out in there. So this one, I, I really enjoy this bike. This is a sweet machine. I already changed the tires out on it. Time to change the tires out on that Raleigh. But you know, just hang these from the ceiling. You can see why I like these for collectibles. Take up a lot of space. Last but not least, actually not even last, this is the bike I ride most of the time now. In my old age, I've decided I really like riding off-road more than on-road. I can't believe I used to ride 400 miles a week on those kind of bikes. But now, a friend of mine came over a couple years ago and sold me this one. I think I paid $300 for this bike. But, you know, maintenance on a mountain bike is kind of expensive. I probably pay 300 bucks a year or maybe a little more to keep this one on the trail. Um, this bike is, it's lighter than any mountain bike I've ever had. Still a lot heavier than my lightweight road bikes. It's, um, well, it's a really, uh, all the guys I ride with call it an antique. It's a 2014, so I guess it's coming up on, it's seven years old now. Um, it's, uh, most people ride mountain bikes now. They have a, a full suspension. This one's got a hard tail and then it's got, you know, shocks up front. Um, mountain bikes now cost between three and five thousand dollars and I'm sorry I just can't spend that much money on a bike. I, me of all people, I, I spent a lot of money on bikes in my life but I can't spend that kind of money on a mountain bike. This one has a lot of modern bike features which I really like. Like, let me show you this. Hydraulic disc brakes, oh my god, such a huge improvement over the, these, these brakes, they're the best brakes in the world for 20 or 30 years, Campagnolo side pulls, and I go out and ride on this bike and I'm like, holy shit, compared to, compared to this bike, this bike will stop in a driving snowstorm in a mud puddle and it'll stop better than these bikes will under perfect conditions it's just it's just better technology it's like the difference between drum brakes and disc brakes on a car um you can't see but um these are tubeless tires uh they're full of not full full but they've got a lot of uh, sealant in them so if you run over something that punctures your tires they're self-sealing and um i'm not really sure well, I'm not sure why. It, it, they they just ride better than tires with tubes. Obviously, they're going to be a little lighter because there isn't a tube. But God, you wouldn't think it'd be that much of a difference. I mean, how much does a tube weigh? But anyways, as soon as I I I, I wore out a back wheel, as I'm prone to do, I'm I'm a monster and I ride hard and I you know the wheels get especially the back wheels get really beat up. So I got a new back wheel and I decided to go tubeless and man I was so impressed that I got another tubeless tire in the front they're just it's just it's just more maneuverable it's hard to explain but boy if you if you have a tire if you have a bike with tube tires and you have the opportunity to go tubeless try it out and you'll see what I mean unbelievable it's got um they all make fun of it it's like antique or whatever because but it's a, a nice index shifter all you do is hit the buttons up here and it goes up or down and shift same thing with the the uh, front derailleur most modern mountain bikes don't have any chain rings up front this one has three now they have like uh, a huge huge like this this back sprocket will be you know 52 teeth and then you know just one sprocket on the front so all the gear shifting is in the back um i don't mind the triple I almost never use the big gear, I just use the bottom one and the middle one. Um, another thing I love about modern bikes, the um, clipless pedals. These are two-sided, flat side for when you want to ride around in your vans. And then a clip inside for when you want to ride around in your, your uh, biking shoes. You can see over here, I, I like them so much I got a brand new set for my Gazelle. They're nice pedals. So these ones are Crank Brothers. They make really cool stuff. Uh, 
not much else to say about this bike. It rocks. I love it. It's a good machine. Everybody should have a good mountain bike. I found this bike on the side of the road. I was I drove past it a few times here on Vashon. Um, people just put stuff that's for free out on the side of the road, and I kept looking at it. And I, you know, as I drove by, and I thought, eh, it's just an old mountain bike. But then, eh, you know, it's got parts in it that I could use. I'm sure, the rack could go to somebody. And then I, when I had it in the car, I didn't even notice. But check this out: it's a Cinelli, Cinelli, which is, you know, it's a. They make the bars and stems on my fancy Italian road bikes. It's a Cinelli. I never even knew they made a mountain bike. And I looked them up online. I guess they still make them. This one's even got a... There's a sticker on it somewhere. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Columbus tubing. I'm going to focus in there. Just like the Colnago. But it's actually it's made in Taiwan. But... It seems to be pretty good. It's got nice quality welding on it. It's, uh, eh, needs some work. I got, I got, uh, you know, I used to be a professional bicycle mechanic, but I still, I, nowadays I have, I just do maintenance. I have other people do the major work. I, my buddy's going to come over and we'll figure out what to do. The brakes are still functional. The tires are old and funky. I, I'm imagining that it probably, those derailers are probably done. Suntour's been out of business for decades now. Um, but it's got a lot of potential. It's certainly worth the price, free. Uh, here's another bike that I had for a long time. I got this one for 20 bucks a long time ago. This is a 1986 Cannondale. An oldie but a goodie. Get the shovel on it. This one needs some new tires and stuff, but it's it's a super lightweight. I uh, converted it for use of the drag strip, so it's got only one one sprocket on the front. All right, it's a good bike. It's really light. Feels good when you're riding around. Here's the last bike I got to show you today. This one is. Uh, a Gary Fisher, 1990-something. Gary Fisher was uh, one of the founding inventors of mountain biking, Mount Tam, California, Northern California, the Bay Area. And uh, he uh, made his own line of bicycles. And eventually this one was licensed to Trek. So Trek made this one. It's really, really light. Um... It's been gone through, so it's a good it's a good riding machine. Basically, it's uh, you know, it, it's it needs some it needs odds and ends. It's a uh, you know, it's a beat up old machine, but it's a Gary Fisher. It was probably uh, a nice bike when it was new. I mean, it's a nice bike now, but it was probably not top of the line, but pretty close to top of the line when it was when it was first sold. Um, I got this one for free. It was in a pile of aluminum scraps at a friend of mine's junkyard, and he said he was just going to send it off to aluminum recycling, and, you know, if I wanted it, I could take it. And he wasn't even done saying it before it was in the trunk of my car. I'm like, geez, a Gary Fisher? All aluminum? And, uh, I can't remember what kind of components it's got on it. Looks like... Shimano, good stuff. It's got these weird brakes. They were trying a lot of different systems before they finally moved into the disc brake world. Like I said before, and it's once you once you run hydraulic disc brakes, you don't understand how anybody can run anything else. I mean, I think the Campagnolo side pull brakes are just everything by Campagnolo is just an elegant, especially you know during my era of the early '80s. You know, I guess it's kind of like the way some people look at, you know, cars from the mid-60s or, you know, there's just a look. But I don't care what they look like. They don't work for shit compared to disc brakes. Well, that's it for this episode. Um, 
So get yourself a bicycle and get out there and ride around, especially in the summertime. It's a nice way to enjoy your surroundings. Um, I've heard that bicycles are the most efficient form of transportation in the history of mankind, and I kind of believe it. Um, they're nice collectibles because you can just hang them from the roof and they're not that expensive even for the nice stuff unless you decide you got to start buying new bikes but um, as I was filming this I uh, got the word that my engine is that much closer I told you the pistons are here and now today I ordered rings and bearings and next week it should be going back together again uh, in a month I hope to be racing at the double divisional at Woodburn and the uh, following weekend on the 18th of July I want to be at the Mopar show at Woodburn and uh, I think I might actually make it so I hope to see you there uh, there'll be more videos before then hopefully uh, putting the car together and going up and visiting Terry until then take care bye